Hello everyone and welcome to week three of season two of EDFH in Overwatch. My name is Kevin Navic Dignan and I am joined by the v the VK. Today we are live with games from our Connecticut region. We are starting with games between the Fairfield Ludlow Falcons and the Canatech Panthers. I want to thank our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of Engineering, and Mob Crush for making this season possible. Now to get into this game map selection will be just like in Overwatch League. First, we'll see a hybrid map, then assault, then control, then escort, and then, if needed, a tiebreaker fifth map on control. And the maps we will be seeing today are Numbani, Volskaya Industries, Ilias, Junkern Town, and as the, as the tiebreaker, Li Jiang Tower. And we are already going to Numbani. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know about you, uh, Vic, but I'm excited to see game, uh, today's games. Both teams, of course, both uh, the Falcons and the Panthers have top 500 players. So this should be a very high level game of Overwatch and we should see some fantastic coordinations. And both teams won their two previous games in the two past weeks. So we're seeing a battle of favorites here. Whichever yeah. team wins here might just take the whole season. And what do you think about the current comp scene going into Numbani as this first map? Well, uh, I'm interested to see the new soldier in action, the new spread, which starts uh, maxing out at nine bullets instead of six. This proved uh, very good for me in competitive play in uh, just usual ranked matches, but uh, in professional play Attackers i've never seen that before so it's going to be very interesting to see that it's going to be very interesting to see the new pharah and uh, yeah. it's a very interesting bastion yeah that, from, that is an odd bastion uh, the... pick they, they do have 15 Thunder. seconds to switch over and of course we are playing now with the reworked torbjorn <laughs> along with a couple more visual changes if we do see a may her ultimate now shows the height and it's more akin to a snow globe, and all shields have had a rework to kind of give you a bit more information visually to how well they are on health. Still a full dive pick from Panthers, Panthers and uh, Brigitta as the second healer without the third healer for uh, the Falcons. This yeah, is no, going to be very teams, interesting to see. Yeah, both teams running Winston, and as I say, that Snevak actually falls onto the point now. The Panthers all jumping on, running that dive comp like you just said. Most of the Falcons are going to try and keep onto the high ground. Eclipse actually tries to get Zuen as he was slept there for just a second, but the rest of his team turns around, manages to protect him. And Jeff Woods is getting quite low. He does fall to Glacier there. Glacier, Schnark, and of course... Uh, anti mail there on the point. They are going to be able to defend it for a little bit. A bio grenade coming out onto Nova, so he's not going to be able to find any healing. Go to jump off the side there, not to give any of them any more ult charge. And Andrew's also going to look to get knocked off. There you go. And again, that was a nice hold by the Fal uh, by the Falcons. The Panthers jumped onto the point. They managed to get uh, the pick on Stevic, and then they cleared it up. Uh, still. A lot of ultimates getting ready for both Panthers and the uh, Falcons. But the most notable one is, of course, the Dragon Blade for Eclipse. Without, without uh, the Nano Boost to back him up, I'm not sure Eclipse will be using it this fight, but he might just do it. Yeah, the dive coming in there, Nova is going to find Glossier, which means they're down it. Uh, the Falcons are down a healing, not going to have that AoE healing. The Meteor Strike coming out from anti mail it, is, it does connect with Arkham Knight there, so that means the Lucio is down, Mick, uh, Mr. McDouble also falling, so they have no healers, and I believe that was a... Oh, there we go, Andrew jumping off the edge, I couldn't actually see anybody. That was but, yeah, a great sorry. big flop on the Dragon Blade side for Eclipse. Getting capped as... Just as he was putting the blade out, that's not good for him. Now only Primal Rage and Nova, and Jeff Woods is pretty close on... Uh... Yeah, Glacier popping his ult there. Just trying to bring up, so just trying to get his team a bit tanky when they jump in. They manage to find the pick on Nova again. We hear another Meteor Strike along with the Diva Bomb. The Jeff Woods Meteor Strike isn't going to be able to find anybody. Anti Mail turning out around and managing to actually counter him, immediately getting the Rocket Punch into him. And again, Zuen just finding Mr. Big Double. Andrew's going to be left in that corner once again, wanting to jump off the side. And a Rocket Punch coming out from Anti Mail. It looks like he might be able to find Arkham Might before he can get back to his team. No, he is going to be able to, to roll out just to get around that corner and save himself from dying. I love the ult economy from Falcons. 
they are only using the bare essentials, all they need to actually take the fight and not an ult more. They still have the tactical visor on Zuem, they've got the uh, Primal Rage and Stevek, and they are going to use them in the next fight. Anti Mel jumping into the middle of the entirety of the Falcon, or into the Panthers there, popping his ultimate, trying to look for a target that he can find. And the visor coming out and the bomb. Oh, just all of the elves being pressed at the moment. Anti Mel landing on Mr. McDouble there. Stevek with the Primal Rage is going to be able to get some grounds for his team. Snarks finds Chef's Wood. So again, they're clearing up here. Andrew and. Uh, Andrew and Nova there left to themselves. Andrew's mech, of course, falls. Nova pops Primal Rage trying to save his Mini Diva, and Mini Diva does manage to jump off the edge, but I think he did more damage than good there, right? By Primal Raging and taking all that damage, he just charged up the Falcon's ults even more. Of course, and uh, this isn't really good for... This isn't really good for Panthers. They've only got 20 seconds to attack. They can't get to the point, but it's going to be a very tough fight without any ultimates against uh, against no ultimates as well. But Glacier and Schnark are at least somewhat close on the ultimates. Yeah, 10 and, seconds left uh, on the clock. Jeff Woods looked for a rocket punch there, but he actually just collided into the floor, missing Glacier. Nova's going to jump up onto the high ground, trying to push people off, but he's going to be quickly rejected. We see the Diva Bomb coming out, and it is going to... Find Andrew there, sorry, Andrew actually not being able to have a bomb to, re uh, to counter that, so he's going to get picked out. We hear a Meteor Strike coming out, Mr. McDouble just trying to stand on that point. Overtime is, of course, counting down here. Jeff was the last one alive, and by the looks... Oh, no, I take that back. Eclipse manages to get onto the point there. The Meteor Strike coming down, and he is going to be a defender, and that's going to be the first point going towards the Falcons, or the first round, I should say. Big place for Manti Mail. Score. He was the main main hero, main uh, main man in the defending. Because uh, taking two or three or four picks just as Nova and Andrew dive in, well, that's got to be worth something. Has his ult ready at almost all times. And, uh, well, it's worth noting how, how tight Numbani actually is. And there's a lot of walls to get splattered on by uh, Doomfist's Rocket Punch. Not, not good for Panthers. And uh, we see a we see a Hammond from Stevek on attack, which surprises me because uh, I haven't really seen Hammonds being used on Numbani before, especially in attack. But we did see Hammond, uh, Stevok specifically on Hammond last uh, last week, and he managed to get quite a bit of work down into it. But it could be interesting seeing a Torbjorn being picked out here. Of course, it hasn't been reworked. Many player, many teams haven't been able to have been able to get used to his new playstyle or playing against it. So I don't think Stevok will stick onto it, but I wouldn't mind seeing one. Probably not. No, he is going to switch back they... to the Hammond. Yeah. They stick to the Hammond. We've got two Far Mercies, Eclipse plus Arkham Knight, and Zuem plus Fruity Memes. Yeah, so but on the... The winner the of the duel, the win winner of the Pharah duel will basically be the winner of the whole fight. Yeah, but what you also need to consider is that the Panthers actually have Jeff Woods on that soldier. Meanwhile, anti mail is on the Genji. So, Eclipse actually finding Zuem immediately that Fruity Memes, of course, is going to be looking to try and get that res or try and get his fire back up. But he has nobody left to fly to. Stevek trying to come around that corner to save him, but he's not going to be able to in time. The Falcons, once again, just clearing up this fight. And on the terms of the ult economy, Eclipse is already halfway towards his ult. Unlike Zuem, who got clipped right in the beginning, switches to Tracer now. Probably realizing that he's no match for Eclipse in the sky. And uh, that leaves pretty much no one on the Falcon's side to counter Eclipse. I'm not sure what the plan is here, but uh, they can just ignore Eclipse. Yeah, Zoom switching over to that Tracer, trying to maybe now outweigh those dudes a little bit. Nova on the high ground, just trying to protect his team as much as he can. Fruity Moons is going to be looking to try and keep Snark alive, but Snark actually doesn't end up needing that assistance. Eclipse, again, just ruling those skies. Nobody's really there to deal with them. Zoom's looking to try and get something done, but with that Mercy healing, he's just not being able to find enough damage in a single clip. Snark still trying to contest the point, but uh, he's basically an all charge at this point. Yep, there he goes. No ultimates for Falcons yet. 
they no, can they are close. Mail. Yeah, they are pretty close, but uh, pretty close is not does not equal having an ultimate. They've got three ultimates on Panther's side. They've got the Barrage, the Toxical Visor, and the Valkyrie, Enemy in my sight. which are all game-changing ults. One of those ults could change the entire fight. Three of them... Yeah, we hit the Justice coming out from Eclipse along with Valkyrie from Arkham Knight. They're gonna try it and just keep uh, Eclipse up when he ults there, but with the second Valkyrie being popped, all of this healing is gonna be coming out right now. They should just be focusing on positioning. The Deeper Bomb coming out from... I believe that was Snark. Yes, that was Snark. And Andrew's getting extremely close to his Diva Bomb as well. We should be seeing that coming out any second. Jeff Wood has that visor to, if he needs to, just pop that to try and deal with anybody around, especially Zoom just uh, zooming about there. You hear, you hear the visor, he's going to be looking for anything. The denial coming out from Stemic, but along with the bomb, if they can't find any ground, there we go. Glacier's actually going to fall to Andrew's bomb. Visor's playing off in the background, just running out there. Anti Mail getting his ult now, and he's going to be looking for a clip. He manages to get a clip with the dash there. Andrew left, Andrew and Jeff Wood's left to defend this point. We could see them managing to capture it. Andrew there just left alone and again he is going to get picked off. Arkham Knight is going to be able to have the chance here to fly back but he might just get picked off immediately. Yes, Stevic just pushing them back. Eclipse trying to sneak through but round two, the Falcons win. One minute on the clock. That was a pretty good hold from, uh, from the Panthers but they made the main mistake of playing against a hamster. You need to win fights fast because the longer hamster stays alive the worse our chance of winning the fight is are. Meteor strike! What well, um... is the anti male <laughs> Taking down three. A very nice Doomfist performance. So it's uh, also very nice to see the team's understanding the uh, importance of that high ground position. We see basically no one on point until uh, the attacking team runs on point. Until uh, they actually need to contest the point. Right, we're going to be hopping into a quick break real quick whilst one of the player's clients just fixes their issues. So the next uh, map is going to be Volskaya Industries. Two control points, A and B. Well, this is going to be interesting. I uh, actually am wondering if the teams are going to employ the Symmetra Cheese strategy. When you just place a teleporter to the left ledge and uh, roll on straight to the point. Or we'll just see uh, something usual like dive or goats. What do you think? Uh, well, with Volskaya, we could see a lot of things. See them trying to run like Hammond, Winston on a on the attacking side and going through the left flank. Uh, again with the farmer, so you go with something more divey, more agile. And then on the side of the defense, we could see an Arissa coming out. We could see Arissa Rhine. That's not very typical, but those extra shields do tend to help on that first point. Might see Widowmaker Park come out. There's so many good angles for her on that map that she has a lot of options. Um. We'll probably see Brigette. We could even see a Sombra. There's there's some some core points on that map where, of course, hacking those can like the mega packs can help dramatically. Indeed, and the EMP is paired perfectly with basically any alt in the game, from Earth Shatter to even Infrasight, and EMP would uh, lead you to some opening frags and some. One fight because four v six is basically a one fight already. It's, it's not even not when much you, people EMP, under EMP can do. Yeah, exactly. Because of course they're going to be silenced. They're not going to be able to use any of their abilities, and it's just going to give you one. If you have a raw mechanical advantage during, like just from skill, you keep your mobility abilities when you're not EMP'd, so you're a lot slower for a lot of characters, especially if you've got something like Doomfist. Soldier can't sprint anymore when he's EMP'd, so. It works out pretty well with, like you said, pretty much any ult, but it also just works out because they lack mobility. And it looks like both teams are ready, so we should be getting back into the game any minute now, going into that Volskaya Industries. Of course, the Falcons took that first map on Numbani, so hopefully we see the Panthers come back a little bit now. Very likely. At least the defense was uh, pretty close. The attack 
not so much because uh both teams seemed relatively good at defending and uh only only the falcons were actually decent at attacking they were picking at least someone panthers weren't weren't getting that that amount of picks and uh we do see a goats from falcons we see a Risa and Diva combination from Panthers. Another Farmercy, which is uh, which is a very good read because uh, Farmercy is one of the essential counters to Ghosts. Yeah. If, of course, Eclipse can land those shots, because uh, he needs to he needs to focus down Lucio very fast. Yeah, but Eclipse has, has proven himself to be a, a good player. Last in that last round, he got plenty of very important picks at the much right, like at the much needed time. And I also believe he's currently top 500. So even in the ladder, he's proven himself. Ten seconds until the attack starts. Let's see how what it work out. What should, what should we see the Falcons now doing just to initiate this goats? Well, the first pick would uh, be coming from Brigitte. Would be a shield slam, and after that, Stivek must roll in and roll in hard without leaving any room for Panthers to breathe. Yeah, and they, they, the Panthers actually actually called it out pretty well, playing onto that high ground to try and avoid as much of that goat rushing as they can. And of course, they know they're all going to jump up onto the high ground here, so they're all just going to jump off and just position themselves away, grouping them all up so Eclipse can get as much damage out as he wants. He's already up to 50% on his ultimate, and if he gets another clip of direct rockets, he should already have Rocket Barrage. Of course, Mr. McDouble falling to Stevix, so the first pick does go to the Falcons. The second pick, of course, Jeff was falling to Snark, but Eclipse manages to find Glacier here. And like we were just saying, the ult already comes out, but Schnark was in position to eat all of it, managing to save Stevik just as his shield broke down there. Schnark's going to be looking to try and deal with Arkham Knight and Eclipse. But with Arkham Knight, Eclipse and Andrew, the only three left, I say that. Arkham Knight falls, Eclipse, uh, Andrew loses his Diva mech, and Eclipse manages to fall to the Moira Coalescence. That looks like the first point's going to go to the Falcons. Very good job by them. That's uh, basically a flawless GOATS execution. They've read the position of Panthers perfectly. They've rushed there, they made them spread out, and then just picked those fights, uh, the fights they could win. Like, yeah. start engaging directly on uh, Jeff Woods. Yeah, and Zoom's gonna be popping his ult there. Yeah, Zoom's, uh, Zoom's gonna be popping his ult there, trying to give his team as much armor as they can as they go into that fight. A charge coming out from Stevic actually manages to find Nova, so it's gonna give the Falcons a bunch of picks there. Jeff Woods, so four picks all there, only left to the Farmers, the Eclipse, and Arkham Knight, and they're not gonna be able to survive for much longer either. And again, that was a team kill for the Falcons. Andrew there, or Schnark even, throwing his bomb, looking to try and find somebody who was getting a bit too eager. Hammer down coming out, not actually finding somebody, and then we see Anti Mayo's Graviton just not letting them get onto that point. On you. Wow, that was that was fast. Score. That was very fast. Zero to two. Switching sides. One ultimate from Panthers, and that's it. That's that's all they had in in the whole round. And uh, they they have to be wondering what to do now, how to attack as perfectly as uh, the Falcons did. They decide to employ just the same strategy and go goats. Not the worst decision. And we see anti male on Widowmaker and Zwem on uh, what seemed to be a Junkrat pick, but is now actually a Tracer. Yeah, Zoom's going to be sitting on that Tracer, and like I said earlier at the start of the match when you asked me, anti male is on that Widowmaker, he's going to stay onto that high ground. Maybe play around the back barrier once they get onto point and just look I for a few picks. I Maybe mean, anticipating a far mercy of their own and hoping to pick off the mercy or even the farer yeah. just so that when the mercy goes to res, it's an easy pick. But he's not gonna get any. You you don't get quick picks against goats. They're they're all shielded up. There's no one to pick basically. And Andrew is on Symmetra. Yeah, yeah so they Are might they actually possibly... doing the flank strategy. Well, they might do the flank strategy, or they also might just rush straight through the middle, get a Symmetra TP down, and try and get onto that bunker straight, like in the middle, right by sight, take that high ground, and then just no, reuse their shields. 
No symmetry today. Well, that was unfortunate. I was I was excited to see maybe what they come up with. But of course we see the Falcons all oh, holding that high ground. Like I said, Anti-Mail is going to be looking for an easy pick. He just, he hits Arkham like that, but just misses the headshot. Getting a body shot, putting him down to half HP. They're going to all rotate over to the left. Mr. McDouble falling to Anti-Mail. Like I said, those picks, there's one. And then if Arkham Knight also falls, then they're going to have to regroup as quickly as they can. So they're taking onto the high ground. Actually getting knocked around by Andrew, but not knocked, in, knocked into the rest of his team. Doom on that junk press is going to be trying to deny as much area as they can. Funnel them into Anti-Mail's sights. And with them constantly pushing like that and actually looking at Stevok, it, the shields aren't looking at any mail. I love how Panthers are not retreating after getting after getting one of their people picked, but uh, are not attacking. They just wait for Mr. McDouble to respawn and to re-engage. Yes, yeah, Stavik actually getting Stavik actually getting rezzed there by fruity memes because nobody turned around in time. And with the Ana boost coming out onto Snark, they're going to be able to clear up this fight once again. Mr. McDouble being the last one alive. And also being the first one to die. Well, Eclipse does have the Graviton Surge. And this Jumping. could potentially, this potentially be devastating. No but uh, looking at the high ground that Falcons have gotten themselves onto, it's going to be very tough to land a precise Graviton there. And it's going to be equally tough to make Falcons go down to the point. Yeah, and of course you see Zoom there popping his tire. He knows that somebody's trying to flank around, so he actually finds Jeff Wood with that rip tire. Stevok jumping into the middle of the rest of the enemies, propping that primal rage, trying to disrupt them as much as he can. Having a little Reinhardt off there, and, uh, the, uh, trying to knock him off the map, but Nova does back up there, knowing that he probably won't win this fight when the rest of his team has started to fall. Eclipse looking to get to his teammate, looking to bubble him up and just get him back to safety, but Snark sees that. Him and Glacier just constantly putting out little bits of damage there, while Zoom just recuperates, reloads his... Reloads his grenade launcher and just trying to make sure that, again, he's denying as much area. Anti-Mail playing on the back left corner. So whilst Anti-Mail tries to clear up some ground, or if they try to rotate up to them, he can call it out for the rest of his team. Anti-Mail, good pick on Arkham Knight. Fortunately, again. he managed to use his ultimate before. Fruity Meme's actually getting another res there. Nobody is just really paying any attention to him. As Stevik gets nano boosted there, he's going to jump onto Mr. McDouble, trying to make sure that the healing is dealt with. He sees Eclipse and Nova, and he's thinking, you know what? We need to deal with the tanks on the point, right? We need to need to make sure that everybody else is doing what they need to do. A hammer down coming out, and it does hit Fruity Meme's and Glacier. So that's going to be both supports for the Falcons falling. You hear Zoom popping his rip tire. He's going to look for something, but it does get destroyed by Mr. McDouble and Eclipse just aiming it down as quickly as they can. And it looks like the Panthers are going to be able to capture this point. They used everything but the Graviton Surge. I'm not sure if uh, there was just no opportunity or they're saving it for the second point. Yeah, they might be trying to snowball this out with a Graviton Surge as they all try and regroup. As you see Eclipse running forward, he's trying to wait for Stevok to drop his shield and there's the Graviton only actually hitting Stevok. But that might be all they need as Stevok falls down to Nova's charge there, setting him up in the corner, getting slept, leaving Fruity Memes maybe the chance to res, but no, they're actually going to focus him. Jeff was just uh, rocket shield bashing right there, managing to get him down. Gracie is going to jump onto the point, try and keep as far up as far as he can do as much damage as he can, but anti -mail is going to just be outgunned and need to retreat back. Stavik charging onto the point, but just getting counter charged there after being stopped. The bomb coming out, just denying them as much space as they can. We were seeing that May, and they only need a little bit more. But with Schnark and Fruity Memes both getting onto that point, we see the change to Hammond there. Just going to be spinning around that point, knocking around everybody as much as he can, trying to deny that area for the rest of his team. And email on his trademark Doomfist there. He's going to be also looking for a pick, trying to build up that me uh, Meteor Smash as quickly as he can. We see the Coalescence coming out, just keeping the rest of his team out. We see the hammer down, and it is going to hit anti -mail there. The Coalescence clearing up Stevic and anti -mail, and that's going to be the second point going towards the Panthers. So we get to see another round. It's, it's not so one-sided this time. Fortunately, but still, Falcons were able to run down a minute of the clock just by just uh, stalling the point. There was no hope of winning that, that fight, but uh, taking a minute from the enemy team when you get no time from capturing the point now, this is very valuable. We see another yeah. Far Mercy from Zoom and 3D memes. And another goats from the Panthers. Well, if it does work, Bonjour. don't fix it. No, exactly, and it did work for them that first round. Ready for combat. And she's on a Torbjorn, teasing us with the pick, but uh, we know it's not gonna happen. 
Remember your training, and we'll get through this just fine. Ha! And anti male again on a Widowmaker. Yeah, I mean, it what it it did what they wanted it to do, right? And I was able to just get as much free space as he wanted. He managed to find picks. And that's basically all they needed. One pick can decide the entire fight. We've seen that from... Oh, take the Eclipse's uh, Graviton Surge. Just taking one tank, Stevek, and uh, that was enough for them to roll the points. Yeah, and again, we see Zoom on that Far Mercy with 3 e memes. Stevek again, just going to be holding onto that point, trying to get as much of that AoE from the Tesla Cannon as he can. Zoom cutting them off, and he gets a few direct rockets there. Jeff Woods and Arkham are getting very, very low. Mr. McDouble is about to fall from the cost of damage he's taking from Zoom there, and they just don't have anywhere to deal with it. Andrew's trying to eat as many rockets as he can with that Matrix, but Zoom's going to have that high ground, or just the free ground there, with anti Mel also putting pressure onto the shields. He can just flank up behind them. He doesn't really have to worry about his health. Due to Fruity's healing, but as soon as Fruity goes for the res on Stevic, a clip or oh, a zoom goes a little bit too far and manages to get picked off by Eclipse. Panther still need to regroup and re-engage. That frag on Zoom was uh, certainly very tasty for them, but uh, I'm not sure if it had any actual use. It's, uh, they're already grouped up as six, and Zoom is already moving on, and he has the ultimate. He might be put in a even in a better position here, as he's going to be flanking, coming in with his uh, rocket barrage ready. And an I'm not sure what choice. Panthers expect it. An interesting choice of Infrastrike. Uh, Infra they already knew that they were all coming up there, but just trying to get figure out the information of who was coming when. Zoom with a huge barrage there, managing to find Eclipse and Mr. McDouble, which is going to put a huge dent into this attempt by the uh, by the Panthers here to try and capture this point. We see Jeff Woods popping the Brigida O, and again, it's a bit of a waste. He isn't going to be able to have many people to follow up with. Andrew and Nova left on the point. Nova looked like he was about to pin Snark there, but Anti Mail manages to stop it with a nice, a nice couple body shots. And Panthers still run goats. Even though Zuam is countering all of them just uh, with a one singular rocket barrage, they still run goats. They still believe this is going to work. Maybe they need the ultimates for it to work. And they're pretty close on almost all of them. Yeah, but they've already wasted just over two minutes of their initial four minute starting time there. So if this doesn't work out again, they're going to have to start thinking about doing something else. As once again, Zoom is just flying up behind them and getting as many free direct rockets as he wants. Even being hit by that fire strike very quickly, we should see Fruity try to do both Diva Bobs coming out from both teams. And Andrew manages to find three memes, which means Zoom has absolutely no healer with him at the moment. Mr. McDonald will trying to get him with the coalescence, but the Nano Barrage is going to look for whoever it can find, managing to just get a clip with the last rocket along with Jeff Woods, who was hiding in the house. Mr. Big Double is going to be trying to rotate around there, trying to get rid of Zoom as quickly as he can for the rest of his team, but they're not going to be able to. It's just too much for Andrew to handle. They've got Zoom and they've got Anti Mail, and they both are essentially Andrew's targets. And uh, the way I see it, he just doesn't know who to focus first. Because there's Anti Mail in an absolutely different position, there's Zoom. And you need to pressure both of them. Who to choose? Yeah. And as of right now, it feels like they need to be dealing with Zoom, but that's because they've been putting so much attention onto anti mail and focusing on the shields. Nova's pushing out before anybody else can really follow up behind him. And Andrew's now, they're making that effort, they're splitting that focus, right? Andrew's jumping onto anti mail, but he's just gonna jump away as soon as the boosters are gone and Snark will come around to try and counter it. <coughs> Excuse me. Zoom getting a huge barrage there on to. Oh, I say huge, it was just Jeff Woods. I thought there was gonna get a couple more people. Eclipse managed to find Zoom though, so this might be the chance that the Panthers are looking for to try and get this point. 20, 15 seconds left on the clock they are just about to be able to get it to second Surrender tick if they can will. it might give them a bit more uh weight uh, like room to work with stevic getting out of there trying to defend this point trying to waste as much time the primary range coming out fruity memes again looking to get some healing not that he can really find anybody else glacier and anti mail though just sniping from above trying to keep their team up and if nobody can get back in time, Stevic might actually fall. It's now overtime. They've not got much time to work with this. Zoom actually managing to get back here. If he can build his own up quick enough, he's at 40%. He might be able to stop this push and actually just stop them from getting this point. Jeff Woods, of course, now getting and He's a little bit low, but he is going to be able to survive with the help of Mark Knight. Just giving them that extra little speed boost that he needed. 
Andrew jumping in, looking for something. He thought, he thought about bombing that, but he didn't. Ben Schnark manages to bomb, and it doesn't actually find anybody, but he is able to find Nova Shield, so he's not going to be able to defend any of that. A hammer down coming out with Stavik. Andrew's bomb coming out, trying to find Stavik, but Stavik's right on top of it, and he does manage to get a bubble right on it as it explodes. Place to frame perfect. Still, Panther has managed to snatch some percentage of the point. A little bit at a time, but uh, going up from 64 to 71, this might be the game changer here. Score. Two to two. Still, three barrages in four minutes. I believe the new fire is sort of kind of overpowered. I mean... I don't agree with that at all. I believe the new fire has just been a uh, power shift, right? It's more focused on players who can hit direct rockets and just reduce down on how much she can do on splash damage. So it makes it better at single target if you're hitting those constant direct rockets, but reduces how much presence she has in a huge grouped fight until she manages to get barrage. The concussion grenade having a slight reduced cooldown, again, just gives her a bit more options instead of just trying to spam rockets into a big group of people. Okay, let me put it that way. Zoem is overpowered. Zoom's an extreme or Zoom is an extremely good player and he has been playing Kizfara along with fruity memes on that mercy about as well as he could in these situations. His positioning has been extremely well thought out. It's always been the opposite direction of anti mail so if a shield turns around, anti mail gets free shots. And uh, we see another far mercy from the defending side. They're they're employing the same strategy the Falcons did. And uh I don't know if it was planned or they decided to do the same thing on the fly, but might work for them. Except they're not going to face goats. They're going to face a full dive pick. And uh, the Widowmaker is going to work slightly worse against the dive pick. Yeah, I mean, anti males definitely said, him and his team have had a discussion, they want him to stay on that Widowmaker in case again, Far Mercy, that has been on and off for the Panthers. They're going to try and take the high ground and just kind of reverse what they usually do on defense. They want to take the ground. They want to make the Panthers attacking the site with anti male getting onto his little corners again, trying to find some picks. And once again, they just managed to clean up this fight pretty much systematically. anti male finding two picks there on Arkham Knight and Andrew. Three picks on Nova as well. Eclipse manages to, or Snark manages to finish Eclipse there and then they're just going to res and it's like no died. And uh, that's, that's point two. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's point three, I mean. That's Matthews going towards the Falcons. Now making it 2-0 to the Falcons. Play. What map well, are we going at into least next? that was somewhat less one-sided. Yeah, no, it, it was, but it still felt like the Falcons were... They just had more coordination going on. And uh, I do believe the next map that we're going to be going into is going to be Elio, so a control point map. It, it should be interesting to see how the teams adjust their strategies, what heroes they pick, especially on um, Well and Lighthouse, where, you know, those environmental kills become a bit more prominent. Well, just like usual, we're going to see two Lucios, two Roadhawks, two Orisas, and all hell breaks loose with them. Or we might see something different with the Hammond. Probably, seeing as Tivik uh, loves Hammond. He might have figured out something with him. Now we just need to wait for the map to get changed. And, uh, well, what what else? What else can we expect on an Ilias? Of course, the ruins will be double far mercy, some widow makers, maybe an occasional soldier even. But uh, maybe a Torbjorn? Is there a place for Torbjorn on the, anywhere on Alias? Um, well, with new Torbjorn, he has that Molten Core, and his ultimate is so good. It is so, so, so very good at denying area, right? It's just a huge area where he can cover it up, slow, deals damage, denies presence. So yeah, I mean, I think... If you stop thinking of Torbjorn now as I've got to sit here and smack this turret and more throw this turret up onto a high ground and go in with the Molten Core, then yeah, I definitely think he could have some play. But it looks like we see 
yet another dive from Falcons, with uh, Zoem still undecided, undecided on his pick. No, they actually decide to run goats. And Eclipse is picking a Farah, which makes me expect a Mercy. Hmm. This this is actually very surprising. No, Arkham Knight picks a Mercy for Eclipse. And uh, against Goats, Eclipse needs to do a lot of work. Yeah, and we do, again, we see that, that double Brigitte, right? Or oh, Brigitte. And um, it's it's just going to be a lot of stuns, especially with both Reinhardt's being played on Nova and Stavek. Like, they're just going to get stunned, they're going to get knocked around if they're not positioned correctly, or if their, their Squire isn't beside them to protect them from the other. So, yeah, it, it should definitely be interesting. Both the cops are also very, very similar in terms of, well, tanks are exactly the same, and healers were at, you know, 50%, so... I, I, half the teams are mirrored at this point, right? So it's going to be these sm small adjustments from either uh, either side playing on the respective characters. And again, with this initial fight breaking out, it's left for no time for Stevic to manage to find that pick on Jeff Woods, knocking out the Doomfist to try and relieve some fear to his healer Zoom, finding Nova there. But Nova did find Glacier just before it, and Snark's going to be trying to deny as much of Eclipse as he can, actually deciding to rotate back and just go for the point, right? Regroup with his team, let Stevic just eat some of the rockets with his shield, and hope that they either get too aggressive and they manage to catch them out, or unless they wait for the team. And as we were saying, that the rest of the Panthers do arrive there. They're going to be building up slowly. Eclipse already at 84% onto his ult, so a couple more direct, ro uh, one more direct rocket after this. He we should see a barrage coming out, and he might be looking to position himself right above there, Reinhardt. And if he manages to find it, he does not. He actually doesn't. He isn't able to find that right there. Still needs to take care of uh, Schnark, because if Schnark is inside his mech, is uh, well somewhat alive. He's, got, he's just going to deny Eclipse's ult. Yeah, he has no, to figure but... something out about that Diva. Yeah, the barrage coming out from Eclipse there. He is able to find anti but Snark again, always on his tail, quickly dealing with that, eating as many rockets as he could. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to save his teammate, but the Diva bomb coming out there is going to destroy Nova's shield, so that's going to give them a bit more room to either play aggressively or to force. Uh, to force the Panthers to just sit back, wait for their shield to regenerate. The hammer down coming out from Stevic there, turning around, but it's quickly denied by a Graviton, so they're going to be able to find some room. Jeff Woods jumping up behind them, he's trying to find any of the supports that he can. Manages to hit Glacier there with the rocket jump and the Meteor Strike coming out. He does, he isn't able to find anybody except for he clears up Spec coming down after that Meteor Strike. Fruity Moon's looking to try and get away, and he is going to find them, and now it's just once again down to Stark to try and get onto this point and contest a little bit, but he is going to get found, and this is going to be... The first time that it it feels like the first time that the Panthers have decisively won a fight. Eclipse has got another barrage, and uh, Falcons still holding on to the goats. Well, there's some reason in it. It's uh, been working the first 74%. Only the last time fight was lost. Yeah, and the Graviton coming out along with that barrage. Uh, it, uh, the Graviton came out from anti mail there, and then immediately after Eclipse tried to barrage it to try and deny as much as they could, but they managed to just turn it around very quickly, and the Falcons managed to retake that point, clear up the fight. And again, just as soon as the Panthers get it, the Falcons are just like, okay, we're coming back in, we're taking it. Uh, we also still have ults left. That's, that's some awesome tanks job there. Anti-Mail, Schnark, and Stevek, all three of them. Quality tanking, I love it. I love seeing it. Yeah, Stevek actually managed to fight three kills there along with the rest of his team. Four kills, as he just practically runs in and just smacks his hammer about. We see Mr. McDouble, the only one here, just keeping it onto overtime. He's gonna pop his ult, but he's gonna die almost immediately, along with the Diva Bomb coming out, just to really secure that point. Still, still, we see some fight from from the Panthers. A little more, a little, just just a little more powder, and uh, they'll be able to take a point, then a map, and then possibly a match, because uh, they're still shot at this. They they still have White House. They still have 
no, Ruizy. not a lighthouse, but uh, well Hello. and ruins. And uh, after that, they still have Chunker Town. And Five, uh, who knows, four, maybe even Lee Jiang Tower. Stevex switches two. to Hammond. And Nova and Andrew. Orisa and the Roadhog. Tank pair. Well, this is going to be very interesting to see because Stevex possibly is going to be getting a lot of minefields on this one. Yeah, I mean, Stevex just came around the corner there and managed to knock a few, a few of them out of the way, trying to just disrupt the setup that they were going for. Like we said when we first came to this point, right, we were probably going to see an Orisa, we were probably going to see a Bastion, and I said that Hammond might actually come out to play instead of the Roadhog because it just works so well at denying and disrupting these areas and the possibility of getting multiple picks just from knocking them all out is, you know, it's more likely than finding it with Roadhog. Still, the main duel uh, here is going be between Andrew and Stevek. If Stevek can throw Andrew off uh, into that well, it's uh, it's a fight loss for Panthers. If Andrew is able to hook Stevek, his team should be there to immediately focus him. Jeff Woods is on Reaper, which is uh, very deadly for Stevek. Yes, Stevek actually falling there, and just before an anti mail saved Glacier from a hook. Uh, onto that point, immediately coming in with a rocket jump and actually cancelling out the hook, which saved the Glacier, as I just said. Eclipse actually getting hit by anti mail in the air with that rocket jump, and once again, the, the Falcons are just going to be able to capture the point, take it back, build up their ults, and just try and play it back as they have game after game. It's surprising how little ultimate had the Falcons built since the last two fights, because uh, they're playing against the Roadhog, and Roadhog is basically a big jar with ultimate charge. Yeah, but Roadhog's been getting picked off pretty much immediately at the start of the fight, and of course, Animal looking to get the high ground to deal with that far mercy, going after Arkham Knight, and he's going to be able to find it. Eclipse now left with no mercy to protect him, and with the, in the sights of Animal, he's going to be trying to find it. Nova getting hit by a rocket, oh, by a rocket uh, punch there, actually falling down to Eclipse's... No, Nova did turn around there and managed to get the headshot. The bomb dropping out from Snart, actually managing to kill Andrew, and we see the death loss coming out from Jeff Woods getting bopped back by Glacier, actually saving him and Snark from taking too much damage. So I'm still goes down to it, and uh, the points still belongs to the Falcons. Yeah, Jeff Woods actually getting knocked into the uh, into the environment there by Glacier and Stevic combined, just knocking them about with that uh, wrecking ball knockback, and the mines just denying off as much room as they can. Arkham Knight actually flying into it a bit too quickly, not being able to stop himself and dying to it. We see the full hog, or the whole hog, coming out from Andrew, but falling due to the pulse bombs, AoE damage, picking off Nova and doing most of the damage to Andrew. That was, that was very painful for Arkham Knight. Because uh, had he stayed alive, he could have made the difference. He could have uh, saved the Roadhog, the Risa, and possibly turn around the entire fight he might have been able to no but unfortunately he wasn't able to in this time and we see the infrasight coming out from anti mail giving out all of the information that he needs and now he's just sitting down in the back right and once again we said i've said this last match i've said this last couple matches anti mail always plays in the opposite direction to the rest of his team so if they turn around the rest of the team collapses on them when they're not looking and steric making great use of hammond's just general mobility here knocking uh, jeff woods up and popping his ult trying to deny off as much area as he can and eclipse is blinking into it not giving him a chance to survive Andrew's going to be trying to contest this point for as long as he can but the combined efforts of Stevic, Zoom, Snark and Animal is not going to live for very long. Nova just a second off the point but even if he had landed at that uh, trajectory he would have died immediately to the Hammond bombs. Map 3 for Falcons. Nice. Play of the game. That's some very decisive uh, Hammond plays there. He was so brave flying inside the Reaper and the Roadhog ready to kill him and he survived he got that minefield he got that game epic clear skies ahead and that's and going to be the third to... game going towards the falcons so at the end of the day we are playing with the overwatch league rule set so we are going to be playing this fourth map which is going to be junker town will we see some bastion Oh, we might. We might see some pirate ship. I, I, I do hope to see them coming off of that goats, you know, maybe a bit quicker if they do decide to play it, because it's not exactly been working out for them 
especially with how the Falcons have been playing. Well, uh, the Falcons have been playing dive as well. And uh, from where I'm sitting, dive might be creating even more problems for the Panthers than their goats do. Yeah. And what, uh, what do you expect when... to see out of comps this time around? Goats all the way. It's just too simple and too effective to be ignored. I hate that I have to agree with you, but it, it, is, it is the most boring comp to see. Yep. That's a cast. Yep, twice. But still, maybe some part of me hopes that uh, we'll see a Bastion pirate, pirate ship, or maybe even a Torbjorn pirate ship. Well, Torbjorn now, of course, his um, Molten Core being on his E, he can't get that level 3 turret. So it's, again, I don't think Torbjorn to pirate ship would work out as well as it normally would. But still, that's a turret. That's two guns. That's. That's 24 damage per second sitting on a turret, uh, That's sitting true. on a payload. And uh, that area denying ultimate, he can pretty much Welcome secure some part of the path. Or that maybe true. deny the healing packs. Eclipse instantly hopping onto that Bastion, but switching over to me very, very quickly there. So again, we're, we're not entirely. Oh, he goes back onto the Bastion, so we might actually be seeing a pirate ship. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. They've got an Orisa, which basically confirms the pirate ship suspicion. And Jeff yeah. Wood's unsure who to pick, but uh, it's going to be a Widowmaker. It's and probably of course, going to be a Widowmaker. This is going to be our last map, the Overwatch League rule set, and the Falcons have won all three of the prior maps, but play this fourth one just just to get more games in more casting in and for the teams to get more practice against each other no jeff would stick into reaper and we see a double sniper comp from falcons anti mail and zoom widowmaker and hanzo respectively another orisa and snark on roadhog which is probably even more interesting to see it than uh, double snipe because usually usually you'd want a divine just in case buying just in case uh, a farmer he comes in or a pirate ship comes in but it's a raw dog Five, four, i three, i'd give a lot one. to know Attack what reasoning incoming. stands behind this but uh, let's see it in action I mean, again, we see anti mail just sticking on that Widow that's been so trusty. Zoom actually getting that pick on Nova immediately. It's going to be absolutely devastating for the attempt at Pirate Ship here because Eclipse getting hit by the Holt and Zoom and anti mail are just going to be able to clear it up from just devastating that one Holt. Well, and they don't stick to it. Eclipse switching out to Widowmaker. Nova staying at Orisa, surprisingly. And there's that Roadhog in action. Yeah, and again, as soon as they just come out of that door, they're going to be picked off by Anti Mail. And uh, Free Noobs falls Jeff Woods now on that Reaper, sneaking up behind them, trying to find the picks. He is going to be able to find one of them. And if he can find Glacier as well, it might be just what they need to be able to get this all set up now and ready for the Panthers. You, yeah, Nova manages to hold that corner there. And Eclipse now on the Widow. He's going to be counter sniping, trying to find one of those picks. He manages to hit Zoom, and Zoom gets a little bit low there, but he's going to find the safety of the corner. And Smail very low on health, but still staying alive and uh, trying to make a shootout with Jeff Woods. Actually gets healed up. Yeah, they are They are going to be able to make some ground now that Nova's on that point with the shield. Eclipse looking to find somebody, but actually losing the duel to Glacier there. And email picking off Jeff Woods now, and we see the Nano on Andrew trying to find Glacier. He's holding that corner for dear life, but he is going to get Micro Missile charged into Fruity Mims and Eat as well. He's not going to be able to hit himself with that bio, and they just missed timing it. But Stevic manages to turn around, save him, that little, save him, that little bit of HP that he was missing. Unfortunately, he still does die to the boosters. Jeff Woods, 73% of the Death Blossom. They, uh, yeah. I don't think they need it for this point, but for the next one, very likely. It's gonna be a nice ultimate to have in your pocket. 
And the Panthers are going to be able to push this point, or at least up to this point, with still plenty of time left to spare. Antimail switching back to Widowmaker, losing what old charge he had on Doomfist. Not a big sacrifice, but uh, still an interesting decision. Eclipse very close on the intra side. They're probably going to wait it out. Yeah, and the big Hulk coming out along with the dragons there. It's not actually going to be able to find anybody, but it does disrupt them just long enough to get an overall. Eclipse finding an email for the first time in the whole series. Look at Schnar crawling in from behind. No, decides to back off. No, and we do see the supercharger coming down from Nova, sitting on the back of that payload. Glacier's trying to jump in to deal with it for his team. He's not going to be able to find it in time. Zoom left, actually getting picked off by... Oh, no, he doesn't, actually. That was three memes that fell there. For some reason, that looks like that his Zoom. But they do manage to clear that up well enough to be able to keep pushing this point, and the supercharger did live for the full duration. And that's a very quick second point for Panthers. Very nice to see them finally find their game. A little bit too late, but still. A little boost to their confidence. And uh, this might help them, if not on this match, on the future matches. Yeah, and Imao again holding that ground, trying to deal with Eclipse's Widow. Although it's not been too much of an issue for him, he is now probably a bit more aware of it. It's not getting hit with the nano boost, hitting that ult and then being slept and immediately woken up. He went through a midlife crisis just there in the last three seconds. But Stevic and Snark are going to jump onto the point, followed up by Glacier's... Um, Gla My brain has just stopped working. <laughs> Glacier's ult. <laughs> there you go, Transcendence. And Snark's going to be able to follow up. Stevic jumping into the middle of them, just trying to find the Mercy, trying to get them as low as he possibly can. Mercy and Widow being just collapsed on in the staircase there. Zoom's going to find both of them. That's Stevek. Still stays alive. Still goes unpunished for what he does. And what he does is basically jump into six, put the barrier on, and uh, hope to survive. Wish I had so much confidence in my supports. Yeah, Zoom now popping that ult, just trying to deny as much as space as he can, hoping that maybe he can find a couple people there, or just denying the rotation from jumping onto Stavik as he pushed forward into that lower ground. Jeff Woods popping around the corner and actually managing to just deal with Stavik as quickly as he could. And again, some aggression coming out from Nova. Nobody really to follow it up, but Andrew does pop that diva bomb there, not being able to find anybody due to the stack the angle on the staircase, just managing to hide behind it. Slight misplacement on that ultimate, unfortunately. So I'm still goes down, and Jeff Woods is there. He might yeah, be Andrew. very much willing to pop that. Yeah, and that was an unfortunate time to use Death Boss, and the Snark was right behind him, just eating it over the Matrix. We see another Diva Bomb coming out, looking for anybody that it could get, but it isn't going to be able to. Stavik popping into the back, does find Mr. Double with that Primal Rage, and still with some time left, he's going to use the Reduced Cooldown just to jump away, get it reset for when he drops out of Primal Rage. And the Falcons, uh, the Panthers, keep the fight on. They don't let, they don't let uh, Falcons breathe. They just keep the pressure on and hope uh, for something better. And they actually do push the payload in the meantime. Yeah, and with two minutes left on the clock, it's actually looking much better than it has been for the past uh, four games for the Panthers, as they are just constantly seeming to make ground. Jeff Woods again picking Glacier off there, so that's going to mean they're down to support for this next fight. Stavik trying to protect Zoom for as much as he can, but actually the Primal Rage getting popped by Nova, he's going to say, no, I want I want Zoom dead, Stavik, leave me alone. Stavik getting nano-boosted, and the other Winston getting nano-boosted, so now we're in a bit of a Winston off one in Primal Rage, one just in their standard, the Transcendence coming out from Glacier, and you hear the Dragons being popped from the spawn point, trying to just get them off that point. Nova goes down, unfortunately, not taking anyone down. Yeah, the Death Blossom coming out there, but immediately being denied by Zoom with it. Him now switching to Junkrat, just knocking him away with those uh, with those mines. Eclipse in the back there, just all Hello six there. of them jumping onto him. Hello there. And again, with a minute left, they can regroup. They might have time for one more push, maybe two if the first one fails really quickly. Well, uh, unfortunately, all they have to work with is Andres's, uh self-destruct and Eclipse's bomb, and that's it. They're not going to get any more than that in the next fight. If Andrew can land that mech explosion, kill at least someone with it, 
it's going to be huge for the Panthers. Yep. But Eclipse doesn't even get his ult off as he jumps in immediately again picked off, but he does manage to find Fruity Memes, which is going to be a huge pick with a Mercy now being down for the Falcons, but the Meteor Strike coming down, actually not hitting anybody, but disrupting just in enough that they needed to. Snark hitting the, or Snark getting hit by, uh, no, Nova getting hit by Snark's Diva Bomb there, and the rest of the Falcons just, That's or the, yeah, it. the Falcons managing to clear up the fight. Excuse still, 40 seconds for the Panthers. They've got the... They still got the Eclipse's bomb. They've got the Valkyrie, and Nova might be able to stack up the Primal Rage in the next fight. But uh, it's going to be a very tough fight for them. Yeah, and we hear another Dragon another dragon ult coming out from... I don't, actually, wait, where did that... Okay, I believe my... Overwatch just bugged out because I heard the hands are well. But again, as soon as we get into this fight right now, Eclipse is going to be able to get that bomb onto Glacier. And with Zoom MC and Eclipse are rotating around for him, he, or Zoom, uh, he manages to come back around. But Arkham Knight is going to be able to res Eclipse right there. Stavik's trying to do what he can for his team along with Snark. Both of the tanks left. He's just going to need to find at least one pick for the rest of his team to get back in time. But they're not going to be able to. So, all, or, sorry, all five missing a couple did actually fall in that last fight. We see Andy Mail coming out and Transcendence coming out. So the bomb from Andrew is actually not going to be able to find anybody no matter how much he wants. It too. And email is looking to deal with their tanks. The death loss is coming out. It managed to find Glacier and Fruity Memes. And email falling due to the damage as well. And they're going to be able to cap the point. Well, they made it. They they actually made it happen. And I'm very glad to see it. Yeah. No time to spare, but they got it there. They still have a shot at this. We see... Yes, 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 I like what I see. We actually see a pirate ship. Or or no. If the if it's glacier on Bastion, is it going to be a pirate ship? I mean it looks like it, right? Stevox on the Orissa, you got Glacier, you got Fruity Beams just sticking onto that mercy snark with the Roadhog trying to pick off any of the flankers that might come for them. But Mercy as the only healer? This this I'm... don't seem plausible to me. Uh, the all... bottom line, I would love to see an Anna there, because Mercy just uh, just doesn't heal so much. Well, it depends Nothing how they more. play, right? If they all play onto that point and they all group up and just try and leave the Mercy slightly behind them so she has complete vision of her team, if, if you micromanage enough, you might be able to pull it off. Not with the three tanks, you don't. But you've got Glacier. Especially a Hammond being one of them. But you have Glacier with the damage reduction who's going to be able to heal himself as well. Snark, of course, can can heal himself with the E. anti Mel isn't going to stick onto that hammer. He's going to switch over to Genji. And Stevok should just be pretty much as healthy as he could be if he's sitting on that point and just reshielding all the time. anti Mel cycling those picks, settling on a Widowmaker. And we see a Genji, we see a Diva. Glacier is going to have a hard time playing this Bastion. Yeah, and again, like you were saying, right, we do see the pirate ship, they end up keeping the Mercy just sitting onto that point, and she's just going to be, or three moves there, is just going to be damage boosting them for as much as they can, Eclipse just firing into Eclipse, just reflecting Genji there, not really caring, because they just want to be able to scare them away from the point as much as they can, and again, the hook coming out, this is what I said, right, they have they have the Roadhog to pick off the hooks, just get them lined up for Glacier to deal with them, and then if Glacier doesn't deal with them, they have anti Mel and Zoom sitting on the further back lines, being able to clear off anybody who might be flanking. What what interesting times we live in. A Mercy I mean it, nerfed it, countless it, times, still getting picked as a solo healer for the pirate ship. But I believe that's because of the comp, right? There's a lot of self-sustain. They're playing in like a yeah, V course, formation, so there's there's two snipers watching over each other, but they also have complete sight over their support healer and tanks. Come on, let me be a little dramatic here. You could be a little uh, bit dramatic, but it's really working. We got no ultimates on each side, only Zoem is somewhat close on the Dragon Strike. Yeah, Eclipse actually hiding behind the wing. Push out just a little bit further, but he does start firing maybe a bit early, trying to get around, but he does realize that the door is closed. He knows that they're all grouped up and he does find Fruity Memes, which means the Falcons have absolutely no healers and they don't know where Eclipse is coming from right now. Right behind Zoom, he finds Zoom as well, so now they have a general idea to where that Junkrat might be. But if they don't turn around in time enough, repeat rotates again and Glacier isn't aware of it, they might find the Bastion as well. He starts shooting maybe a little bit too early, clipping onto that Arista Grenade and giving or shield and giving himself away. Ooh, Eclipse. 
reaching that health pack and realizing someone from his team took it just a little bit earlier. That's some bad luck there. The yeah, the dragon's so coming out there from the just, just trying to make sure that they don't get back into the point until they Glacier, get Glacier has a tank mode, which is which is going to be huge, paired up with uh, a supercharger. No nano boost, unfortunately, but still. Yeah, I mean... so a 30% damage increase can lead to some potential one shots on on Eclipse, on Arkham Knight, on Mr. McDouble. Even yeah, one one shot would be enough to win a fight. And right here, I'd say this is probably the point this comp strands on even more, right? They have that flanking position, but with the double sniper, as long as Zoom plays around the payload, which he has been, and just watching that corner, letting Glacier pull anybody in who might think they can pick off just the Bastion roaming around in recon mode, and he just take, they just take a bunch of damage, even with all of these ults being popped. They should be able to regroup fairly quickly and recover. Nova actually finding Stabuk and Glacier there, and anti mail so Nova putting in some work for his team now with that supercharger. Jeff Woods was trying to sneak in with that Death Blossom and uh, just got killed. That was unfortunate for him. Could have been, could have been the play of the game there. But still, four minutes and forty-two seconds to push the payload forty-three meters forward. This should not prove a very tough task for the Falcons. Especially now with uh, Far Mercy, Eclipse needs to take his sniper job a lot more serious than he used to. I mean, he's been taking the sniper job about as serious as he can. He's been playing with the positions that he's been given, but right now, actually finding two picks on Zoom and anti mail, so like you were just saying, right? He, with those picks, he's playing off well, but he has been he has been a bit oppressed, right? He has had constantly, he's had somebody after him. If that isn't anti mail, then it's Zoom. If it isn't Zoom, then it's Stevak or Snark. And he hasn't had much chance to just get the room and space that anti mail has been given these last couple games. And it's awesome that uh, he still manages to find picks, that he still manages to control Zoom, to sniper duel anti mail, and to win those duels, which is uh, most important. I would agree. And the whole coming in from uh, Nova there, Jeff Woods popping the ult, and it does mostly get. Uh, no, actually, well, that was the same team, so I don't know what I'm thinking there. But no, it does get a bit eaten by Snark. Sorry, I am completely messing things up today. Nova actually managing to find a pick as well there. They're going to just continue keeping that suppressing fire as much still as they can. A wasted nano boost on Stevak. Yeah, um, but again, the infra side coming out, so they have all the information they could possibly need, and making it so Anti Mail wins that trade with Eclipse. But Nova knows where Anti Mail after the shot is, and deals with him as well. And uh, Mr. McDouble has the nano boost. I'm not sure who he is going to use it on. Probably just keeps it as a sustaining tool as a means to heal 300 HP instantly and uh, this is this is uh, very important this is much more important than basically anything than the damage that uh, the nano boost gives at least if we're talking about a comp like this yeah, and Eclipse now actually really starting to put in some work from that ground that like I said from the position that is being given the, the comp now starting to pull apart, they are starting to switch things up. They pulled Glacier off of the Bastion, put him onto the Ana, going to something a bit more standard. Because again, maybe it took maybe it took the uh, the Panthers off by surprise at first, seeing a double sniper Bastion comp, but they started to gain some ground here, they started to work out the Supercharger coming out from Nova along with the Graviton surge there, they're gonna be able to just pick up a couple people, just the constant damage with the nano boost super or the nano boost supercharge is just gonna be so much coming out. Jeff Woods again with another questionable uh, death blossom there, Snark getting nano boosted, so all of the ults being used in that fight and leaving practically nothing for either side. I, uh, I, I am not sure why would Jeff Woods use uh, his death blossom on an, on an only lonely snark as a diva especially in the mech who basically just eats the whole of death blossom but he did
He's and gonna again, stack a new one. He's playing against uh, against the Diva, who is a very easy target to stack Death Blossom on. Anti mail. Good job, Eclipse. Intercepts Eclipse. him with a flashbang. Eclipse finding anti mail there, just as you said. And with Jeff Woods finding Stevok, it's again, once again, going to give the Panthers a bit more of that ground they need. Eclipse finding Snark's mech, and Andrew quickly follows up by getting Little Diva. Just left to zoom, running away now for his life, along with Glacier. They are going to be able to. Oh, no, I was going to say, I thought Glacier got around the corner there, but Nova does find that last little pixel pit. And look at this out of 4 minutes and 40 seconds, only 40 of those seconds are left which is uh, one fight for Falcons. If they win the fight, they win the map. If they don't, it's the first and only map in the series for the Panthers. Yeah, and with the High Noon coming out from Eclipse, he's going to try and just deal as much damage as he wants with everybody stacked up behind Stemic Shield. And those getting pretty low. The Supercharger coming out once again, and we've seen over and over again, the Supercharger has literally won them fights. You hear the Ana Boost coming out of nowhere. Jeff Woods is going to be able to find two picks. Eclipse finding anti mail, so there's not going to be any Doomfish just jumping about trying to get a sneaky pick. We see the Battle of the Zarya is coming out. One of them does get Bio Grenade. Snark managing to get it along with Fruity Memes, but he does fall, and for the first map of this series, it looks like the Panthers have won. Could it get 3-1 to the Falcons, but congratulations to the Panthers for taking a map, not letting it be a 4-0, and just standing their ground right at the end there. So I, I don't know about you, VK, but I really enjoyed watching those matches. Same here, that was some very good Overwatch. Great tanking, great uh, DPS picks, great supporting. That's that's all you can wish for in an Overwatch match. And do do you have anything to say about those comps, about those decisions? Epic. Jeff, if you're listening to this, please nerf goats. That has nothing to do with the match, but I appreciate the input. Um, I'd of course like to thank you all for tuning in to the beginning of the season with the Falcons, the Ludlow Falcons, they're taking the victory. You can follow us at OfficiallyGF on Twitter and Twitch for updates and announcements. This season wouldn't be possible without the support from our sponsors, the Yukon Gaming Club, the Yukon School of, uh, of Engineering, and of course, Mob Crush. I have been Kevin Navig Dignan. You can find me on Twitter at Kevin Dignan. That's C-A-V-A-N-D-I-G-N-A-N. -N -A -N. And uh, that was the VK as the color caster. You can find me at th3vk Twitter handle. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week.